Hey everyone, I'm Brian with Obedia, and in today's video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of making use of the Quantize panel in Personas Studio One. Quantizing is very simply an easy way to apply different timing to uh, pieces of audio and MIDI in Studio One, and it is one of the cool things about Studio One is that you can quantize audio as well as MIDI, so you can actually retime your audio uh, pretty much just as easily as you might be used to doing it with MIDI notes. So, let me just tell you a little bit about the Quantize panel. You're going to want to experiment with this at home, of course, in order to really learn how to use it in your productions. But the Quantize panel is accessed by clicking on the Quantize button right here in the top of our Studio One interface. Now, when I click on that, I'm going to get the Quantize panel right here. Now, the first thing that's cool about this is that I can detach this by clicking on the detach button right here and this will detach and allow me to move it around to a different screen and things like that but uh, let's just talk a little bit about what quantizing will do with respect to audio and to MIDI now again as I say quantizing will allow you to retime audio and MIDI now this is not the same thing as warping your audio, although it is fairly similar if you are warping audio uh, in Studio One, uh, but quantizing is not an immediate replacement for warping audio and making it stay in time with your Studio One project. You'll want to look at some of our, of our other videos for information on using audio bend in Studio One to do operations such as that, but quantizing will allow you to tighten up a performance and uh, usually fix small things that you might otherwise have to go back and re-record. This is really common in MIDI. After you've recorded a MIDI piece, you may find that your notes may be a little bit off, and when that happens, you can make use of quantizing to actually uh, bring those notes a little closer to your grid settings and keep your timing a little tighter. Now again, same thing with audio. So, after we have expanded the Quantize panel, you're going to see a number of different options which you have access to in the Quantize panel. Now the first thing that I have here is my Quantize grid settings. And you're going to notice that as I click each of these different note values, which I have accessible, starting with whole notes and moving all the way up to 64th notes, I'm going to change the grid settings in my Studio One song. Now this grid is what is going to actually control how I'm going to apply my quantization to the audio or to the MIDI that I am working with in my Studio One song. Then you can select the type of quantize that you would like to make use of, starting here with straight and moving all the way over to the right, and you can set the swing for that. Now swing will allow you to add a little bit of sort of a human feel to your quantizing and keep all those notes maybe not so uniform and the same. Then you can control the start and the end values of your quantize and also the velocity of how you're going to apply your quantizing. Uh, and all of these are going to really dial in exactly how you would like for your quantize to sound. Over here on the far right hand side, you have access to a number of different presets for quantizing, A through E. And each of these are going to be a different factory set preset uh, for quantizing in Studio One. Now. You can also uh, access the pull-down menu here to access some presets, and optionally, you can store a preset. So if you make a preset that you really like, you can click on the small plus symbol right here. Now you'll get the store preset dialog box here. You can give your quantize preset a name and save your quantize settings for future usage. Now finally, you're going to notice two small buttons here, the quantize and the quantize on track buttons. Now each of these will have a little bit of a different effect on what it is that you happen to be quantizing. The first option, quantize, is the default option. That's the one that's usually going to be selected. And if you're using quantize, that means that the quantization will happen within the selected events. So in the case of an audio event, this means that the transients will be detected and then they will be quantized. In the case of an instrument part, such as the MIDI that I have active here in my project, the notes within the part will be quantized. So this mode is equivalent to what happens if you select any event and then press the Q key on your keyboard to apply quantize. Now, if you take a look and select the option for quantize on track, that's going to apply quantize a little bit differently. If that is selected, the selected events themselves will be quantized as single objects. So for instance, if a selected audio event starts between two different eighth notes and the quantize note value is set to eighth notes, 
pressing apply in the quantize panel will shift the entire event to start on the nearest eighth note. Now quantizing with this mode can only be done by pressing the apply button, which is right up here in the quantize panel. If you press Q on your keyboard, you're still going to be applying regular quantize to audio or MIDI in your project. So all of this really depends on how it is that you want to apply quantize to your audio or to your MIDI, but let me just show you guys how we can apply quantize to audio and MIDI real quickly. I'm just going to use the option uh, to simply quantize rather than quantize on track. And I'm going to select a relatively normal mode for quantize, uh, which is 1 16th to work at 16th notes. This is what I usually use when I'm tightening up a MIDI performance or something like that. Click on that. I'm not going to make too many changes here uh, in the rest of my panel. I am going to leave my uh, quantize mode at straight. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on the apply button for quantize with my audio event selected. So now you notice, as we said, when you apply quantize to audio, it's going to uh, apply this as bend markers. Now we've spoken about bend markers in some other videos, so you will want to check out our other videos about making use of bend markers, but you can see I've selected the bend tool up here in my tools section of Studio One, and now I can change these bend markers. And uh, each of these bend markers has been created based on my quantize settings, so again allowing me to retime my audio inside of my Studio One song. So let's uh, just show you real quickly how quantizing MIDI can work, and this is pretty easy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select all the notes here uh, that I'm working with in uh, my Studio One song. And now if I just simply start to make changes uh, to my grid settings right here, you're going to see that my grid is shifting around. It's changing depending on the note value that I decide to use uh, with respect to quantizing. Now I can change each of these around to change my grid. And as I do this, again, you're going to notice that my notes are going to switch around based on the quantize settings, uh, which I make with respect to changing the quantize on grid settings uh, for my song. Now there's also a number of uh, options which I can make use of with respect to quantizing MIDI. Now of course I've accessed my MIDI uh, by simply double clicking on it and opening it up here in the bottom half of Studio One. And now I have the quantize panel active of course and I can click and after selecting some notes I can click on the action menu right here. I can select a number of different quantize settings which I can make to my notes. So I can select, for instance, the option to quantize 50% or a number of other different quantize options. All of these are going to actually change the timing of my notes. And all of these different changes are going to happen depending on the quantize grid type, which I have selected. So tie all this together and you have a quick and easy way to actually fix performance issues and maybe just tighten up your performance inside of Studio One with respect to audio and MIDI. So I hope that that's been useful to you guys. As always, please stay in touch with me. My email address is brian at obedia.com. You can get me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obedia tutor. Of course, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash obedia tutor. Give us a call today. Find out how you can work with a digital audio trainer just like myself and get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. We'll help you to tame your technology, which is what we do best here at Obedia. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you.